Hello, hello, hi everybody. Uh, so uh, my name's Amanda, I'm part of the team here at Nottingham Contemporary and uh, welcome to our first walkthrough. Uh, this is what we call our welcome walkthrough of the season uh, and it's intended as a really sort of first walk around the show, a place where we sort of walk and talk together around the show. Uh, there'll be a little bit of an introduction as we move around the galleries that'll give a little bit of a flavour of the artists and the artwork and their intentions, but quite light touch. Uh, but um, the focus more on this session is just to hear different perspectives, different connections uh, across the show. So we've got uh, different community partners that are joining us as we move around. Uh, and they'll be sharing really their kind of thoughts, their connections, the way that they're connecting to the show, the things that, uh, the connections that they're making with their life and their work and their experiences and, and really going off in different sort of tangents. And really that's what uh, to this session is really about celebrating, about uh, those kind of informal connections and the ways that the gallery can space can be used by different people in different ways for different things. Hello everyone. Okay. Hello. Yeah, I'm going to try and keep this super brief. There's a lot of depth to this show, but I'll leave you to your own time to investigate. Um, I just want to look at some of the basic ideas. And in each gallery, I'd like to think about how the art is kind of being activated, how we're being invited to maybe try acting in that space. And in this space, we've got this beautiful shrine area. Um, and when we think about shrines and rituals, it can seem a bit like imposing and serious. But really, a ritual is just a habit or a series of actions. As we walk around in a gallery or as we walk around in a shrine, we might be more thoughtful. We might pay a lot of attention to things. We might slow down and just let those thoughts come out. We can engage with the other art in the room, think about who is being depicted, think about why, think about the materials. There's a lot of mystery to some of the art Crashy has made, and we might think about why is that material being used? What is coming out of her mouth in this? And as we learn those things, we're drawn more and more into the story she's trying to tell and the people she's trying to depict. As I said, I'm just scratching the surface here. It, and it's really nice if you come and it's a little bit quieter and you can really sit in that piece and kind of make a ritual of it yourself. So yeah, we just wanted to share um, uh, a project that we've been working on. Um, so uh, as an associate artist here working in the, the learning team here at the Contemporary, um, we work uh, with lots of different audiences in lots of different ways on the communities programme with schools, with families, uh, and finding different ways to um, interpret exhibitions and um, share some of the themes that um, that uh, are here um, with, with our audiences, with our local community groups. Um, and a project we've been working on is with a, a partnership, actually, that we have is with Juno. And um, to say a bit about who Juno is. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, hi, everyone. My name's Kate, and um, I'm a teen advocate. I work with Juno Women's Aid. Um, and we have, we're kind of developing a project with young women. My role is working primarily with um, teenage young women um, who might have experienced domestic abuse in some way. So um, we've developed a project. We've, been, we've come in two or three times, I think. Um, we're going to be working on something over the summer with a small group of young women. Um, and it was really interesting when we did the walkthrough last week because uh, there were some themes that I thought were quite similar. Um, I feel as though I'm not, I'm not particularly arty, so this is a really great experience for me. It's lovely to see lots of young people here as well. Um, you know, I haven't, I haven't got a terrible, an awful lot to say. Um, what I think, I was really touched by some of the work that I saw last week, this exhibition and also the 
one that was in the other room that I think you'll see in a few minutes. Um, and what's the, what's the project that we're working on with the... Um, it's around the empowerment for young women. Um, they're all local young women from the city and the county. Um, and I think they're, they, we're kind of being led by them and what, what their mm. ideas are. Um, and I think they're working on, we're coming in in July yeah. and it's going to be with a the theme clothes, around, yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, as I say, the, the, some of the artist work there were around, I think she said, some bra straps that have got particular messages on and I thought that was quite similar to an idea that we've come up with, so we're not stealing her idea. Um, <laughs> I'm not going to say anymore, I'm really not a public speaker, I'm surprised I'm not shaking like a leaf, so, um, but thanks everyone. Yeah, yeah, thank you. I don't know thank if you've you. got more yeah, to add, no, Charlotte. No, what you were saying, yeah, with the, the bra straps with, so our, our project we're using fabric and we're using uh, what the, the, the young women um, have um, asked for is um, or their, their ideas are around using clothing so old clothing and in a very similar way that Cressia uses with um, uh, her artworks where it's um, clothing that's got marks on it that's got like a history and a, and a life to it and, um, and and like Kate said like we haven't started Cressia's idea of anything we've uh, th this is what the young women had come up with as a way of um, showcasing um, and being explicit about their themes of empowerment and healing and the conversations we've been having is, is around this idea of not hiding, the, the women not hiding what's happened to them and feeling really bold and confident in being able to share their experiences and playing on that kind of domesticity. So the, the artwork we're creating is um, uh, clothes from kind of charity shops or kind of old clothes that are going to be printed onto and stitched into with these words that are very meaningful for a lot of uh, the women so words around survival around healing and then they're going to be strung up kind of like a washing line uh, as part of it it's, it's an event in October isn't it yeah that, we're, yeah, that the, they want to showcase um, so yeah it really resonates with with the work in here and what um, and and the, the similar themes of what Cressy is um, uh, talking about and what you said that there's some things that are really kind of speaking out to us aren't they um, yeah and, in and say my personal experience I'm not um, yeah I'm not I'm not particularly arty I, you know uh, for me I mean I'm going to be honest I think um, you know I grew up in Nottingham I'm a Nottingham city girl um, I grew up in on the Clifton estate in quite a lot of poverty so art wasn't something that was mm. kind of shown to me you know um, and I think similarly for some of the young women that we're working with, you know, this is going to be a great opportunity for them to, to come in and see a different side of art, you know, because yeah. I was surprised at how touched I was yeah. by some of the um, exhibition last week. So. And that's what's really great about the partnership, isn't it? Because the, the group that come, it, it, it feels very different to kind of the way we've worked previously with, with groups where um, they really own the space and that is so kind of meaningful and... Um, important where they feel um, that they can like one like when we're in the studio downstairs that they can just like they come into the office and they they kind of uh, there's like a familiarity with how they uh, are in that space and using it and again it's which actually we touches on the themes in gallery too the the idea of um, what the gallery is and how the uh, institution is like a host for different community groups uh, and that's a good segue into gallery too. <laughs> um, again, I'm going to keep it super brief, but look at this amazing bright space. Um, Abbas has put these beautiful huge orange buttresses in here and despite their size, what they really do is draw attention to the space, right? The openness and how they're they seem to be supporting that space, the gallery. And maybe we can begin to think about, can a gallery support us? How does art make us feel? You know, um, building on things we were talking about previously, it's um, a place that hopefully can bring us happiness or interest, maybe give us space to be sad even. There's this machine over here. I don't know if you can all see it because it's on the floor. This is an ECMO machine. It's a kind of life support machine. So that's a different kind of support. 
It's placed inside this wall that was part of the last exhibition. If you see the seating around the room, it's actually made from this same wall. So again, playing with the structure of the gallery and how it's supported, how it supports us, all of these things kind of connecting together. Um, we're not gonna play it right now because it's really noisy, but if you have the opportunity to come back and press the big green button, there's a beautiful soundscape, um, a big, long, noisy kind of wall that you can soak into. It's quite meditative, and as we enter that kind of more relaxed state, it's maybe easier to think about what these ideas mean to us, maybe think about experiences we've had with people in hospital, people needing support, maybe we've needed support. Those can be really tough memories to think about, so hopefully this is a supportive space that can uh, let you feel safe enough to, uh, to think those thoughts. Thank you all for coming today. Um, I'm just going to sort of take the last point about this meditative sound that will be played in a bit because there's no point in playing it whilst I'm speaking, I suppose. Um, I was actually drawn to this when I, I attended the staff walkthrough last week uh, because um, as part of my daily practice, I you know, spend some time you know, just sitting and meditating and uh, I also you know, practice yoga and uh, what's known as Qi Kong. Qi Kong basically is an um, energy um, cultivation system which I was introduced to about 20 years ago. So as part of my daily practice, I sort of practice you know, breathing correctly, you know, deep breathing and sort of sitting and going into meditation because it's very important that we breathe correctly because uh, otherwise it can lead to certain health problems. I mean, it isn't necessarily explained very well here in you know, the Western world. I mean, a lot of it is based on become a hill and um, let's see what we can do. But there are certain things that we can do as far as prevention is concerned. So it's a very, very important part of my life. Anyway, just going back to the, the actual track that was played, I, I was actually um, drawn to it because of what I've just highlighted, my sort of daily practice and my experience with you know, doing certain breathing. Whilst I was listening to this, this track, I, I just found myself, you know, my body starts, started to move around and then my eyes started to close and I'm thinking, wow, you know, I probably need to sit down because I might fall down. So uh, I was just going to share a little bit of the uh, work that happened behind the scenes uh, to make the art. So um, central to Ava's work is this idea of the imagination and the storytelling and really centering voices and particularly voices that aren't always heard. And for Ava that's sometimes children's voices. Uh, so she's really keen to involve children and local children in the process of making her exhibition. Uh, so, uh, as you walked in round the gallery, you'd have noticed some drawings by children. You'd have noticed, possibly, uh, the audio as well, that's different children's voices uh, responding to the story of this giraffe that uh, Ava has shared with us. Uh, so, I uh, worked with a, a writer who's part of our team, Peter Rumney, and a sound artist called Tom Harris. And we went to a local primary school, Seeley Primary School, which is just on the north of the city between Baseford and Sherwood, if people know it. Uh, and we spent the day there. We had a wonderful day there uh, where we shared Ava's story of Lenka the giraffe and what happened to, to her uh, initially as a, as a baby giraffe in the zoo and then being turned into a museum object and what happened. 
And the children really, really engage with the story. They talked about, they invented new stories, new possibilities, things that happened to Lenka before and after. They imagined Lenka as a living giraffe and did movement work imagining being a giraffe. And they imagined Lenka as a museum object and what that might be like, being sort of still and only being able to think and to, to sort of listen and watch and watching the world go by. Uh, they, so they did movement work, they did drawings, and all of those are on display in the gallery. Uh, and it's really nice that every child's drawing is in the show and every piece of audio. Uh, all the grown-ups have been cut out of the, of the audio, but every single contribution that the children made is in the show, which I think is really important. Um, so, uh, uh, you know, we had this wonderful day together and I just wanted to share some of the themes that I noticed from the children's conversations. They talked a lot about pollution. They were a group that were eco-warriors. So they're really thinking about the environment and climate change and things that they can do in their school and in their community to make change. But they talked a lot, particularly, and it's very pressing at the moment, about pollution, particularly in rivers uh, and the seas. And in their drawings, you'll notice that there's the uh, rivers and seas, and that became part of their stories. So it, um, they talked about plastic, and pollution and littering uh, and they even talked about sort of the way that that impacts upon their sort of in their, in their lives and the impact on sort of birds and animals around them as well um, and they talked a lot about how it's wrong for, for humans to use animals to serve their own purposes and own ends uh, they talked also a lot which I think you know speaks to this sort of post-covid age they talked a lot about bacteria, about viruses, about infection. Uh, they talked a lot about the decay of sort of infrastructure, about shops closing down, about buildings rotting and things like that. So again, that was really present in, the, in their thoughts. There was a lot of about abandoned buildings, about the world being confusing and unknown, about this uncertainty in the world when a sort of catastrophic event happens. Uh, they talked a lot about sort of moral questions, about uh, Lenka being taken from, from home, about the pain of being away from home, about, about uh, being away from your families. Again, that talks to what's happening at the time. A lot of us thinking about those colonial legacies and the histories and that, how that continues to play out in the world today. Uh, they talked a lot about life and death, about respecting life. And when they talked about... Uh, animals and humans, there was a sort of parity there. They valued animal life and they valued human life and they talked about life being short and therefore it's important to treat other beings well because, you know, uh, we've got to look after each other. They talked a lot about the possibility of life beyond death as well and I think that's because they were imagining Lenka as this museum object and her brain still being alive and imagining being in the wild. Um, uh, and then finally what they talked about was voice about a, a lot in their stories, Lenka couldn't speak. The people who were being turned into drafts with this sort of toxic gas couldn't speak. They were trapped in their bodies. And I think that really speaks to, you know, one of the themes of Ava's show is very much about um, centering voices and voices that, that aren't always heard. So, um, yeah, so that it sort of, it was a, 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 you know, a nice moment that the children were talking about that. And, and so I suppose with this exhibition, we've been able to sort of platform those children's voices and those children's experiences in sort of different ways. So that just a little bit of behind the scenes of how children's voices and work went into making this exhibition. <laughs>